Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today I am working on this Bally Paragon pinball machine. You can see I've got the playfield pulled up in the cabinet. And I'm going to talk about um, something that you'll often run into with these uh, early solid state Bally and Stern pinball machines. Um, Sometimes uh, a switch won't work, or it works intermittently quite often, and uh, usually uh, there's a very specific reason for this. It, you clean all the contacts and everything, and it's still just, sometimes it fires, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the switch will just go off randomly, and you're like, what's going on with that? Well, the reason for that has to do with the architecture of the game and how slow the MPU was. So basically, all the switches on the playfield are in a matrix. And the main processing unit constantly senses that matrix looking for switch closures. And uh, it cycles through X number of times a second, right? Um, well, sometimes if a switch is closed and it doesn't catch it, it misses it. Um, and these older processors were not super fast, so the MPU sometimes was not fast enough to constantly pull the uh, play field switch matrix and always catch the switches. So what Bally and Stern did, or what Bally did and Stern copied, was they added an extra little capacitor onto uh, the switches on the play field that would um, make the switch close a little bit longer. When the switch um, was in, in immediately closed, it would charge up this tiny little capacitor. And uh, let me show you, there's two stand-up targets on this game. And uh, the one in the front wasn't really working for me, but the one in the back was working. So let's take a look. So this is a stand-up target in the back. And you see that green thing? That is a capacitor. So this is just basically a leaf switch up here, and it's hit. There's your three pop bumpers, and there's a leaf switch. This capacitor here charges when the switch is closed, and it basically keeps the, it provides a little bit longer closure time for the MPU to sense. So... Um, it takes just a tiny little few milliseconds or nanoseconds to discharge, but it's enough to compensate for the lag in the MPU pole of the switch matrix. So sometimes if these these capacitors start to go bad, they'll just they'll trip and, and it'll they'll trick the CPU into thinking the switch is going off. So a lot of operators what they did was when they would have these intermittent problems, they would just cut cut them off. They would cut these capacitors off. You can run the game without them and what will happen is the switch won't always be detected but it's probably better than a switch randomly going off in certain spots in the game and just making it malfunction. Um, so the lazy way was for the operators to just cut one leg or cut the whole thing off and just not worry about it. So sometimes you'll find these games and you'll find the capacitors on them. Sometimes you'll find the capacitors with one leg cut off and they're just not there and you're like, what's going on with that? That's what they did. They sensed there was some kind of problem with the switch, so they just cut the capacitor because it was probably a faulty capacitor and they never replaced it. On this game, I have two stand-ups. This one in the, uh, at the top is, always works well, and of course that's why, because there's a capacitor on it. But if I go up and look at the capacitor, the, the, the switch above it, right here, this is another stand-up target, and you can see the capacitor should be right here and it's not there. So that's what my problem is. Sometimes I hit that center target and it's not registered by the game. And since I'm doing a new rule set in this machine and I want that center target to start a particular mode, I have to make sure that it's more reliable than that. So, and you know, when you're firing it from the flippers really fast, it'll hit that switch really rapidly and bounce off of it. So it's only catching it probably 25% of the time when I hit it. So that's just not good enough. So I'm going to add another capacitor to it. So let me show you what these capacitors look like. Um, they originally were like this. Let's see if you can zoom in on that. Um, they're kind of little, little wafer style capacitors. They're not polarized, so you can put them on either end, right? Um, but now they got these little teeny tiny ones. I don't know if you can see that. It's just little teeny tiny. So I'm going to put one of those on here. So let me... Uh, let me zoom in and show you what I'm going to be doing here. There used to be a cap and it basically uh, was cut off completely. So I'm going to put 
my reading glasses on because I can't see all that well up close. And I'm going to take this little tiny cap and I'm going to hemostat it onto one. If I can get it right, let's see. Grab the right end. Okay. So I've got it tied to one. And there it is, it's in place. I don't know if you can see it. So now we'll take my soldering iron, find some solder. Where's my solder? So, supposed to be prepared for this kind of stuff. I took my solder out and now I can't find it. That's great. Just great. It's probably sitting right here on top of something. So, I'm going to solder this, if I can find my solder, and then um, when I do that, we'll flip the thing over and see if the thing works better. So sometimes these, uh, I'm not going to waste your time uh, doing this, but anyway, I'm going to solder this little c capacitor back on there, and then that should work. So if you notice that you've got flaky switches on the machine, check to see if they've been cut off. If a capacitor has been cut off, replace it. It's a point zero one microfarad, and this is a 160 volt point zero one microfarad. Um, they're, they're fairly common. You can get them at um, Great Plains Electronics. You can probably get them at uh, uh, Pinball Resource, uh, various other places, or just any electronics place. It's a standard non-polarized um, uh, capacitor that is 0 0.01 microfarads and yeah 50, 100, 150 volts will probably do fine. Um, so that is a just a short little trick if you're running into problems with switches on your Bally and Stern solid state games that's probably the culprit. So uh, until next time thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos as I update this Bally Paragon. Thanks for watching.